Hey everyone, welcome to the Root Podcast, live recording of our adult class in Handle with Care. Um, I don't have my monitor set up, so I can't tell. Am I jamming you out with this music in the background? Let me, I gotta switch over here so I can see. All right, am I giving thumbs up, thumbs too down? Too loud, too quiet. It's good? It's good, okay. All right. All right, this is uh, music that my friend Jeff created, who's with Jumpstart 3. Uh, he's got four of them out there called Alter the Atmosphere. He's a fantastic believer, spirit-filled, and he's a mu- musician, a magician, a magician. A magician. He's a magician of music. <laughs> anyway, they, they, he's put them out on YouTube, so you can find it as you search Alter the Atmosphere, and you'll see it, and I really like his stuff. So anyway. Welcome. Uh, let's start off with some prayer. We're having tech fun today. For those of you who haven't noticed already, those that tried to jump in early, like, where is he? He's there. He's not there. He's got a blue screen. It's been one of those days all the way around. So we're going to kick off with some prayer, and then I can't wait to to hear out of our own mouths what God's going to release. And to for really... you guys. Mm-hmm. So you want to do it? Father, we just glorify you. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. There's nothing we want to know or learn or grow in apart from you. We do not want to be wise in our own eyes, but we ask by your Holy Spirit that you bring revelation today an understanding that goes beyond what we ourselves can accomplish or think without you. There's nothing we desire more than you than to walk in understanding and revelation of bringing your kingdom here to earth first in our lives and then the lives of others. Everything we do is in pursuit of your heart, your purpose, and your plan, and we thank you that you're here with us as we join together in pursuit of truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. All right, so we are in the middle, in case you're not aware and you're just joining us for the first time we're in the middle of a series of things that god and the word even the spirit specifically say we need to handle with care and so today we're diving into and we started last week a little bit today we're going to go even further into our thoughts our thoughts seem so insignificant that I don't know anybody else fell into the lie that as long as it doesn't come out of my mouth, as long as I don't act on the meditations of my mind or even my heart, that it's okay. And it's really not. Mm -mm. The word is so specific on our thoughts, the building blocks of our life. Really, they're, they're either constructive thoughts building us up to step into the fullness of what God has for us or they're destructive uh, roadblocks or or almost like ticking time bombs keeping us from stepping into the things that God has for us and it's really one or the other that we I used to think there there was there was good thoughts there was bad thoughts And then there was neutral thoughts, things that I could just focus on and it wouldn't matter. It doesn't really help me grow my relationship with God, but it's really not that big of a deal and it's not really sinful things, so I can focus on that. And uh, I've come to understand that those thoughts were stealing my focus. And future. And And my future. Plans God had for us and... Uh, creating cycles of thinking that created cycles of living in our lives that were apart from God's plan. That was a big deal because Mm -hmm. you hear about renewing your thoughts, but you don't necessarily hear about what thoughts to renew. Does that make Mm -hmm. sense? Uh, you, you, Oh, renew your mind, renew your thoughts, renew your thinking, right? But what What thoughts are you renewing? What are okay to have and what aren't okay to have? What really is against Christ and what isn't? And 
as you were talking, I was just, I've really been meditating on a book I'm reading that talks about the incorruptible seed mm -hmm. that was Christ Jesus, right? That's how he could be the new Adam because the seed came from God, which is the blood, means the blood came from God and was put in the woman's sinful body. So when Jesus was born and the Bible says he was all God and all man, it's true. The body was all man and the seed that went into him was all God. But what happened there? He's, the Bible still says, he had every temptation, right? He still had full ability to think things opposite of he that was good, his father. He said he wasn't mm -hmm. even good, right? But just the more you think about it, I'm thinking about the new wine and want the old wine skin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though we've received this incorruptible seed, it's going into old ground, if you will, at first. All things become new means we need to cultivate the things around it to be new as well. The way we're thinking, the patterns of thought we're having, whether it's towards poverty, towards sickness, anything that is mm -hmm. the life we knew before Christ, we need to be checking those thoughts with the word of Christ, the word that is Christ. And so yep. like the new wineskin, like the new ground where that incorruptible seed goes, it is a full shift of thinking completely from how you existed before Christ to mm -hmm. now. And that's every thought. That's why literally the Bible can say every thought. And why is that? Because it will develop your attitude towards the things of God. It will develop your heart towards accomplishing his plan and purpose for your life. It won't take you away from salvation. Right. Right. But it will limit your ability to walk in the fullness of what that incorruptible seed inside of us has available for us. Mm -hmm. Jocelyn said one of the things that she, uh, well, I'm filling in the blank. She only put three words or disbelieving thoughts. Yeah. And uh, that's true. I, I, we've it's along those same lines. You know, I can be tempted and think about the temptation and meditate on the temptation, uh, kind of like what we started with. But if we let, don't let it out of our mouth and don't act it's on it, okay. it's okay. But I can guarantee you, everyone that's fallen into big sins, yeah. we you know we categorize them. These are big sins. How did those big sins even come to be an issue? I mean, how many have heard people say like? Man, they were such a good person. I can't believe that all of a sudden this happened in their life. Like, what? what's going on? It's such a, well, it's the meditations of the heart. That's why God says, where it says to guard your eyes, for they are the wellsprings of your heart. And he tells us to uh, guard the meditations of our heart. Even David prays, may the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you. So why did he it's start there? Because right? what happened with David when he did not have the meditations of his heart being on the things that please God? We know David, man after God's own heart, uber leader, spiritually, naturally, he's the king. He, he could turn a bag a band of ragamuffin uh, warrior troublemakers into his mighty men in his army that laid waste to everybody they fought against. And this David, because he didn't guard the meditations of his heart, which is why I believe he prayed that prayer, what does he do? He hangs out and he's checking out women and where he's not supposed to be. And that causes sin. And then he tries to cover up the sin with sin. And that doesn't work. And he has all this big issues start to come out. Uh, why? Because he didn't guard his eyes. He didn't guard the meditations of his heart. And that actually not only affected him, but you can see then his meditations of his heart with, with women then passed down to his kids. His kids were messed up. Have you ever, ever looked at that? David, you're thinking man after God's own heart. His kids are having incest. His kids are killing one another. His kids are going out and... Jealousy, and, love of money. Yeah. yeah. Ridiculous things. You know, his, his own son laying with David's wives on the roof of his palace in view of everybody. What the heck? 
Now, Where they did, did that have, start? They didn't have the un- incorruptible seed. Right. But David had a relationship with God that was bar none. Like he could have, from what we understand, passed that on to the generations. They could have carried it on because when we pick up in scripture later, the disappointment, um, it, it, I don't believe there'd be disappointment there if there wasn't the ability to pass that on. Right. Mm -hmm. There would be no room, no right for God to be disappointed if the ability to pass that on, uh, despite the, you know, we're in old covenant still there. We did. They didn't. Mm -hmm. David didn't have the new seed. His children didn't have the uh, new covenant. But the idea is still if God's disappointed, that means the capability was there for his children to live the righteous life and honor God. And so, uh, you know, we want to find excuses right? We can meditate on excuses. This is a big one that I see (laughs) as being up to my own life and lives around me is meditating on excuses Mm -hmm. of why it's not happening, why it's okay that it's not, why it's okay that I do this, why it's okay that I think this, why it's okay that I react this way, right? These justifications or excuses, and we not only use them, but we meditate on them. Mm -hmm. Does anyone ever (laughs) find themselves doing that? Like I find myself meditating on excuses. Mm -hmm. I get to feel this way, think this way, do this thing, right? Because, right? Mm -hmm. This man you gave me, in the words of Adam. But do you know what I mean? Like the things that we meditate on. What are you talking about? This perfect man you gave me. Yes. And Adam did not say that. It was not (laughs) Adam and Steve. There was no Steve. This woman you gave me. But the idea is we can find ourselves meditating ourselves on excuses out of God's plan out of God's blessings because we meditate on excuses so that these are things I don't find people talking about is you know yes we renew our thinking to the word yes we allow the Holy Spirit to go beyond what we're capable of doing but yes we are the author of our thoughts he's the author and finisher of our faith but we need to line our thoughts up with that incorruptible seed that has given us all faith that we need and that's a full-time job Mm -hmm. it truly is honoring the lord and honoring him with what we're thinking because that will develop the meditations of our heart and what will come out of our mouths including excuses don't meditate on excuses oh this isn't happening because we can meditate on excuses and get rid of the blessing that is promised to us And that's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to meditate on excuses of why we're not seeing the blessing promised to us and that we will feel okay about not Mm -hmm. standing firm until that blessing is manifested in our life. He's so tricky that the Bible says he's tricky, but sometimes we can lay down when we go so long and don't see something we've been believing for that we start to meditate on our excuse and how we present our excuse to people and how we present excusing God's blessing not happening in our lives. And we start to meditate on this rather than the word and the promise and standing firm. Can anyone relate with that at all? Meditating on excuses. Okay. Everybody's hands are going up. By the way, pause for a sec. I'm saying everybody's hands are going up and some people are like, what are you talking about? (laughs) That's because if you're joining us uh, on YouTube or Facebook or one of those other options, we can't see you. You can see us and hear us, but we want to invite you to be part of the conversation. So go to rootbible.com. Whoa, that was really fast. Let me see if I can put that up again. Go to rootbible.com, find the handle with care option and enroll. It's free. And then you can click on the link. Today we're in week six, and you can just scroll down to uh, today's date, click the button to join the conversation, and then you can be one of these fantastic people that we're staring at, <laughs> and uh, they're staring at us. Um, it's awkward to stop and does staring. Anyone no, that kidding. is in the group, do you want to jump in? Like uh, excuses, is God revealing something to you right now that you want to share with the group that might help someone else who might be dealing with this? And this was revelation to me just in the last few days. Like I focus on what I meditate on, but I wasn't focusing on excuses as being a thought I needed to take captive. I know that sounds, coming out my mouth is like, duh. <laughs> However... It wasn't until the Lord said, don't you see that you're meditating on excuses instead of standing on the promise? And I'm like, no, I didn't. So thank you for showing me (laughs) because I wouldn't have had I known it. Thus, he'll reveal it to you. Does anyone want to share anything from that? Don't feel pressure. But if you'd like to jump in, we'd love to hear from you. Okay. Everyone's staring at us. I know. Like, like, please do don't make call me. Don't me. make me. So what I love about this is this goes with our first point, and this. Um, Wait, Jocelyn's waving at oh, us. Oh please, we'll, yes. We'll, 
Well, we'll pretend it's actually conversational and we'll give you the opportunity. <laughs> Sorry, I was over there reading, but I'm listening. Um, yesterday, Charlotte was having, I don't know, she was just really fussy. She's having, saying her ear hurts, right? And so I'm like, well, I pray over her in Jesus' name, and that doesn't instantly produce the sign of you're okay. And I went back and I just kept praying and I just kept thanking God for that mm -hmm. promise, right? Mm -hmm. And then I kept saying, devil, you have no right here because we've already prayed in Jesus' name and you have to bow to that name. So I went to Bible school and Justin's here with the kids and yep. he keeps texting me, he's calling me, he's, you know, all these things are bam, 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 going down. And I'm like, honey, it is written like yeah. this, yep. she's healed and we have to tell the devil yeah. to go take a hike. And so yes. it's like we can get, and this class right here, the thoughts, because they do the thoughts too. Right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And between Bible school and all that, I'm like, okay, like, I'm not going to let my thoughts go to this. I'm going to proclaim that. And then I'm going to go about my day because That's now right. I have joy and it's, it's done. That's right. Mm -hmm. so now she woke up and I'm like, wow, Jesus healed you. Praise God. And yeah. she's totally fine. Here, you guys want to see her? She's totally cool. <laughs> hey, Charlotte, how are you? Good. <laughs> but that's so good because you could meditate on the what ifs or the excuses, right? Yeah. Uh, especially when it's our children. We no, yeah. you can't. But we feel like we have. No, the, we feel like we have uh, the liberty, right? Uh, to to meditate on an excuse or a what if when it's our children. Yep. Like all of a yeah. sudden, maybe that doesn't make the word true in this instant, and that's what he calls a lukewarm Christian. And they should expect to receive nothing. <laughs> Right. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that, because yeah. I think that's so good for every parent to hear. Right. Is that the word works, whether it's for yourself, whether it's for your neighbor, whether it's for your children, whether it's for your spouse. But the temptation will be to meditate on something that you see rather mm -hmm. than what is true or an excuse to meditate on what you see rather than what right. is true, because right. it's for someone else's good as yeah. if God it's good for them isn't enough, <laughs> right? And, so, and we were even talking about having those thoughts of disbelief, right? Yeah. Because essentially, if we're, you're not, if you're praying in Jesus' name, and that's what the word says. It is written that he, you know, the healing is ours. And so that dis, that those thoughts of disbelief or, yep. I mean, it just contradicts exactly what you already did. So you right. have to, you, know, you don't see the, see it. You just right. have to keep, I mean, the devil has to go, right? Right. So, exactly. Continue and resisting his right to have any part in our meditations of our heart and our thinking and our thoughts. Yes. And that's a fantastic example of our yep. thoughts are either constructive or destructive. You construct, okay, this is what God's word is. Here's the promise of his word. This is what the, the word says. This is what God's igniting in me. But I'm not seeing it. I... Don't know why this is happening. Why are my For kids struggling? My kids, I, I might have to something. find a plan B here because it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to walk in the promise of God this time. And then what does it do? You receive nothing. You tear it all down. That's what. For those of you that are curious at the verses we're referencing, we're talking about James chapter 1, verse 5 through about 8, 9 area. It's James, it's really fun study looking into how powerful your thoughts are. That if you, if anyone who says one thing and yet believes another ends up being like the waves of the sea, up one moment, down the next. If that's describing your life, that one moment you're sky high, the next moment, oh, my life couldn't get any worse. I'm not seeing this. I'm not seeing this. I'm not seeing this. What are what are you? You're like the waves of the sea, up one moment, down the next. And verse 8 says, how can this person, kind of person, expect to receive anything? It's not even something or most things or the thing they're believing for. Right. The word is anything. We shut ourselves down from being able to receive any of God's promises, any of his blessing, anything that God has for us. If we don't keep this straight, we guard 
our thoughts. We take every thought captive. We do not let the meditations of our heart go one direction or the other and just kind of let it flow with the day and however it seems to be going and today's a good day. Oh, yeah, uh, tomorrow it's the a bad day, whatever it is. We can't let ourselves be directed by our thoughts, by our emotions. Our thinking determines, like we talked about last week, our thinking determines our attitudes. And so if you, it's a fantastic signal to recognize the meditations of your heart. If you're waking up having one of those days where like, like I've had the last two days straight when I wake up, I want to kill everybody. It's true. I, it's true. I wake up. <laughs> Not literally kill them, but everybody is my enemy from the moment I wake up. And and nothing coming out of their mouth could be taken, taken as not innocent. an attack innocent. or innocent. Yeah. It's always dastardly. It's always got hidden motives. They're always trying to thwart what God is doing in our lives. And uh, I have to immediately get this brain. Listen, you know what I did this morning? I had to sit out front of the house where no one would find me. No one would go. No one. I didn't tell anybody. And I sat down and I read the word. I had to get my head straight before I even could be found by anybody because I did not want my thoughts to have that inclination. I didn't want another opportunity or an interaction to allow my thoughts go the wrong direction. I want to set my day up with a trajectory of goodness, of God's blessing, of his favor, of seeing who he is in the people around me, not meditating on their past failures and expecting only that from this point on. And so... This is an example. So this is what can keep you in cycles in your life, is if you're standing firm on something, it's... um, it coming to pass is taking longer than expected. You then start to expect it not coming to pass. You start to believe the lies of the enemy that it won't come to pass. You turn to inward um, attack and then you lose the promise because you stop standing on it and then you start again. Can anybody relate with that cycle at all? Okay. But I've seen people do that with healing, with with uh, honestly, almost every promise of God. Joy. Ah, you got me the joy cup this morning. I, I just saw that. She <laughs> was probably hinting at something. <laughs> you have a lack of something in your life this morning. It's three letters, and I'm not going to give you the middle finger of it. Like, oh. But here's was... the thing. Even while he was talking, you know. <sighs> This sounds overwhelming to the natural self. Meditate day and night. But here's the thing. We are in the devil's territory of which we can either choose to allow it to affect us and 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 have influence in our life or we cannot. Day and night. So in order for us to exist as new creations in Christ, day and night, while time exists and we are within the father of lies realm still, then if we're going to be in that realm day and night, the thing that will keep us on that sturdy, solid foundation is what we're meditating on. Bottom Mm -hmm. line, we're either going to meditate on what we see all around us, what we hear all around us, what we're experiencing all around us in the devil's dead and dying destructive world, or We're going to meditate on the promises that live in us, the promises that will come to us, through us, the promises that are yes and amen, the word of God that is true no matter what I see. So if we're going to be in this world all the time and it's always before us, what should our thinking be on all the time and ever before us? And when you're in the word, the Holy Spirit brings the word. Right? So, like, I can be meditating on an excuse and the Holy Spirit go, woo You know what I mean? Like, woo <laughs> woo You know, like, stop it. That's the world's way. That's the dropped way. Tara, I see that hand. I just wanted to say that, um, so, um, I'm up in the middle of the night. I have a young uh, donkey I'm feeding in the middle of the night. And so, 
nighttime used to be a uh, troublesome time for me. If I even got up to go to the bathroom at night, immediately, bam, it, the thoughts would come. And in the past, that would definitely cause a problem. And maybe I wouldn't be able to get back to sleep or they would kind of carry over to the next day. And it was awful. And so, and it's the middle of the night. Like, who wants to open their Bible and read them in the middle of the night, right? That's just honesty. But I did it's it. True. I started doing it. And it's done. Yep. Now it's like it's it's like this incredible peace at nighttime in my right. mind where like I don't hear it. I don't it's not there anymore. And right. if it comes, I go right to the word. Doesn't matter how tired I am, how much I want to go back to sleep, yeah. I just go right to it and it will because it is and it's tiresome and we do live in the this is the devil's territory. But if you just take that extra step and just force yourself through it the results and you know god's promise is there on the other side of yeah. that push yeah mm-hmm. that's good it makes you think of he is the new wine and we can be new wine skin but if we continue to live like the world and meditate like the world and be affected like the world and think like the world then that new wine skin and the old wine skin do you know what happens it busts and how many of you know christians that are living that way and it's literally like they're just busting, like they're just giving up, like it's done. Unfortunately, most of them are giving up on God. So they're like, it's too hard. Well, it is too hard to put new wineskin in the old wineskin. Mm-hmm. You will bust. <laughs> yeah. If you try to live like the world with the new seed, that will never happen. It will never happen. You will bust because you're, you're living a lie. Here's this new life in you, but you refuse to give up the old life. One's going to win. And I assure you, it won't be the old life. It won't. It is so powerful what you're thinking on. And it will develop your attitude. But the more important thing is, it will develop your availability to God, hearing his voice, and doing what he has for you. Tammy, did you have something? Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, because I unmuted. All right. Um, My question was... Sometimes I don't always know, like when Josh was saying he woke up in the morning, he was grumpy, he walked outside, you know, he went outside, he hid from everyone and started to read to get his head straight. Um, I don't always know what to read or where to go in the Bible. Same thing with Tara. Like um, like at night when that happens to me, I'll put on, you know, whatever I'm currently reading. but then I kind of, I was starting to write this question and then I kind of answered my own question anyway, because I guess you could search out whatever that emotion is or feeling that you're having yeah. in the Bible app itself that we all have. You could search out that emotion and then the, there will come a list yeah. of things to go to, to read. Yeah. Because I, I find sometimes I don't always know right right then and there where to read what there's so many you know mm-hmm. options and you don't know how to target that particular feeling I would, I would, besides, that's a great advice. I would say search it out. But like, even if you couldn't search it out, so you didn't have your phone at that time or whatever, you have your word, your solid word, the book. This is a great time to get to know the Holy Spirit's voice. As you just go, Holy Spirit, show me in the word. Yeah. Where I go to fill up and push out this ridiculousness, you know, and Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'll take you somewhere and you start reading a verse and you're like, this is not it. This, this is not it. <laughs> but you just keep reading and all yep. of a sudden there's this like washing of the word. Because it's like when you first get into a shower and you're like covered in mud. And if you just stood there and didn't scrub, like you'd still be covered in a lot of mud. Like if you mm-hmm. just get in there and go where the Holy Spirit says go, he will reveal to you if you just keep going. You know, like Mm -hmm. get to know his voice. You're going to find things in the word and discover things with the Holy Spirit that you never would have gone by a search. Not that, and we push this all the time. We tell the kids to do this, search Mm -hmm. what you're feeling, what you're dealing with, whatever. That's a great option. But the better option still is to get to know the voice of the Holy Spirit and let him lead you to new revelation in the word in relationship. It's 
it's amazing. I think that's what my problem is, is I'm relying on technology, searching and reading more than I'm talking. We're not, yeah. I'm not talking enough. Yes. Today. Yes. And that's probably exactly what he's saying too. You know, a lot of people yeah. end up relying on others to be their answer. I'm going to go, I'm going to rely on the internet to be my answer. I'm going to rely on my next book that I'm going to pick up. That's going to yeah. be my answer. I'm going to. I'm going to run to this or that. And it's really getting our thoughts back onto, no, he is my only answer. Right. I, And so I'm going to go to him and let him, and he may direct you to grab a book. He may direct you to a Bible verse. He may direct you to be still and know that he is Lord and stop trying to find your own answers. And be okay yeah. with that. Yeah. Like sometimes he'll just be like, <laughs> Uh, shoddy season and just sit for a minute and you're like oh, I don't like that and you yeah. try to push through mm -hmm. and go find your own solution and you feel the same as you did 15 minutes earlier right. like <laughs> you just lean into his voice and let him lead you to the answer mm -hmm. and that's where revelation comes knowledge and wisdom comes beyond what we're capable of comprehending it's amazing and I think that's exactly what you just said is you're not turning to him enough yeah. and that's a I new practice just realized, I literally just realized that Thank I you, never Lord. do that yeah I, and that that's obviously the problem is that I never ask him yes. anything yes. Mm. I He's, never do <laughs> I'm He's always that good. asking Tara or listening <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I have to ask him and start listening and be yep. quiet. Yes. Yep. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. So that's, mm -hmm. that goes right into the next point is your thoughts equal your attitude and your thoughts that develop your attitude will develop your availability with God. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are going in with an attitude, if you're going in wrong with wrong thinking, then your attitude and your ail will affect your lack of or or openness to being available to God to use you to speak to you to move in you to reveal things to you to lead you to guide you because yep. your thinking will be off which means you won't even be open like Tammy just brought up mm -hmm. to receiving God's answer because we're thinking on our own works our own ability our own answers what we want to hear what we want right. to be told to do, <laughs> what you know, what, I mean? what we want to be justified in our life for feeling mm -hmm. or thinking, we and can it's laying those down. And when we fill in the blank for what God's plan is, it leads us into trouble, and we end up like our pastor was talking about this last Sunday. We end up being our own false prophet mm -hmm. because our thoughts are no longer on ourselves right. or on Him leading us and guiding us we're telling god okay god i think this would be a fantastic answer and here's all my reasons why one ba -boom, ba -boom. and if we continue meditating on our own solutions right. we can convince ourselves that it this is, is the, the solution. only solution this is and god there's nothing else god could do to benefit or to move me forward other than this option and so I'm just going to take this step in faith that this is the door that God has opened for me. And really, it's us trying to create our own way our own and destiny. calling our thoughts his thoughts. That's and his, dangerous. And his ways, our, way, or our ways, his ways. Right. His, his are so much higher than ours. I, we we got to tell this story about that we listened to this morning. The balloon? The, yeah. So in the, I 19, wish we found the video. in the 1930s, we might have to find the video. If, if we find the video, we're going to post it in the group discussion yeah. on rootbible.com. Yeah. So for those of you that are not on rootbible.com, join us in the handle with care section. And there's a group discussion button right at the top of the list. That's where you find it. Anyway, so back to it. In the 1930s, they were just started uh, playing around with the idea of lighter than air um, aircraft. Aircraft. Ships and so it's the big balloons, the zeppelins, right? The, that kind of thing. And so they were they were in in the U.S. I forget what state Akron, it was. Ohio. There it is. That's why I forgot. It was Ohio. Uh, <laughs> we purpose to forget Ohio. Sorry for those of you from Ohio. Ohioans, we don't for, yes. we don't purpose we don't to forget, forget you. people of Ohio. 
there's just 49 states in the U.S. <laughs> to us. Um, anyway, okay. so they they built this this big ship. They had it anchored to this big like antenna and antenna. antenna thing. It's my he southern twang. Texas. Coming, and so they had it anchored to it, and there were some people on the rope working, you know, anchoring yes, it down. They had uh, the armed forces. They had hundreds of armed mm-hmm. forces holding it down so they could anchor it to this. So that they could start to check out how it works and whatnot. Right. And so, all of a sudden, the connection to this tower breaks. And so, these there's some guys all of a sudden shooting straight up into the air that are holding on to these ropes. Trying to keep it down. Some of them uh, let just go let go right away. Yeah. And there were some others that tried to hold on as long as they could. And then... There was no other option. It was hold on or fall. And so they held on as long as they could. Even and though they were fell going up. And, and some people ended up having major uh, issues in the hospital. Some people even died. And then, then there was this one guy that just wasn't letting go. And so he just kept shooting up higher and higher. And, and the, the guy telling this story says, like, women were fainting knowing what was going <laughs> on. Like, oh. People were freaking kids out, were crying, terrified, kids like, crying, like, oh my gosh, look how high that guy is. He's going to be nothing more than a puddle by the time he lands when he falls, because how long can he hold on? And then it hit 15 minutes, and then it hit 30 minutes, and then it hit an hour. And finally, they were able to get this guy into the the balloon, whatever that Zeppelin control thing was, after a about an hour of time and everyone wanted to know how in they the world they got him down they had the ambulance ready oh yeah and, so uh, they got they him down like put him, him on off. the stretcher like, you, like you have to be seriously hurt and he had no issues like i'm fine and they're like how could you have survived how could you have held on that long he's like held on i didn't hold on at all there was four feet of rope but between, that was hit on the ground, and I started shooting up. So what did I do? I t- let go with one hand, tied that rope around me, and let the rope do what rope does. I just was out there for a ride, and there was nothing I can do, so I just made sure that rope stayed tied. Because I just hung out and, and watched And I just y'all. hung out and watched <laughs> it until you guys rescued me. I knew there'd be something sometime. You're at least going to want the balloon back. And there was a plan C that none of the other guys had thought of. All these guys holding on like, oh, it's so hard to hold on. I can't do it much longer. Oh, and I oh. love like the guys that held on. Like what? It's flying into the air. How are you going to bring it? What will you holding on help? I'm sorry, but this is how we approach our Christian life sometimes. You know, like if I just keep holding on with my own strength to something that's not working that God hasn't told me to do, something will change. Mm-hmm. Or you can be listening to Christian music radio that affirms <laughs> that thinking. I'm about gag and threw up into my car. Listening he to the, hates Christian. Oh my gosh. There's a music. song that, talking about you, do, you doubt God, I doubt God too all the time. But if we just hold on long enough, we'll get to heaven and we'll finally be able to experience some of the things that the Bible talks about. I, was, I almost ripped my steering wheel off the car and <laughs> chucked it at the radio. I was so upset. Now we know why you had to be in the Word this morning. Oh some my Christian gosh. radio sends you a joy list straight to your Word on the front porch. <laughs> I was so mad. And anyway, so we can't allow that thinking to hold us back. If I just hold on a little bit, there's always, always a plan C. His That's strength, really, it's not wisdom, R, A, or B. Knowledge. It's all or nothing. I'm going to fail. I don't know if I can hold on much longer. And in reality, God's promise is there to hold us on. Right. We're not trying to hold on to the promise that if I just hold on a little bit longer, I might see a little bit of healing in my life or, or enough provision to get me by this month. And oh, I just got to keep holding on. Maybe, you know, and it didn't happen last month, but maybe it'll happen this month. I don't, you know, I've been holding on for years that so and so is going to get saved, but whatever. And that's the meditations of your heart is maybe mm-hmm. sort of kind of it might eventually someday. And so what will you receive? Your, what's the meditation of your heart in that? Is it's not going to happen today. Eventually, someday means it's not today. 
and we'll never have an experience in our own lives when it's not today. It's always today. And so that not today mentality is going to push things out forever until we change our thinking, until we grab a hold of who God says we are, of what he says we can have, on how he wants us to represent him in this world, and begin to think, this is me today. Whether you see it or not, whether you're experiencing in its fullness or not, that is irrelevant. Because we're going to tie ourselves, we're going to use that promise of God, his attentions of God, as our rope, and we're going to cinch ourselves to it. And let him. And let him be the one. By his strength. To do what feels so impossible right now. But it's not by our own might. It's not by our own power. It's not by our own wisdom. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We just have to put our thoughts where he says to think and let go of the rest. Even think about it. Just trust him. You know, those that stand firm till the end will inherit the promises of God, right? Even that, if you just quote that, and a lot of people do, and that's okay. If you just quote that, though, it still sounds like grit, you know what I mean? (laughs) But what does the word say to stand firm on? What does it say to stand firm on? Our own grit? Our own strength? Our own abilities? It says his promises. When you stand firm on his promises. So we can't even think about how we read the scripture by our own context and thinking. Does that make sense? Because if we just quote these things, then it sounds like grit and hold on till the end. And it still works for him. Or I have ourselves. to find the perfect verse for my issue that I'm dealing with <laughs> right now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> really? That's <laughs> all of that's us a, do it. Well, it's totally. Yeah. And in, I don't know if you've ever had this happen. I, God's been doing this to me recently. I'll sit down to read the word. And he's like, nope, not that chapter. I'm like, what? All right. What about that? Nope. And I'll start reading. I'm like, what does this have to do with anything? And because I'm listening and obeying to him, he starts depositing things in my heart and in my mind that I needed the answers I needed as I'm reading his word. Even when my mind is thinking, this is ridiculous. You're reading about the transfiguration of Jesus. What does that have to do with what you're going through right now? Jesus was transfigured. Yahoo! Let's get to some real answers. I don't know if you ever deal with that. That's where I've been kind of feisty, angry, maybe a little bit. Well, and that's where I'm at, though. I'm like, what? what's the purpose? I don't want to waste my time in seemingly good works and missing the things that God has for us to step into because I'm so busy or I'm filling my time with things that are are good but absent of God's direction. And so as I follow his direction, even in my Bible reading, uh, now he is revealing within me his ability, his answers, his life, really, it comes down to. I'm no longer my own. I was bought with a price, so I'm going to honor him with my body. I have to say, you know what? I'm going to let go. I relent. You lead. I don't have to be the answer man. I don't have to be, that's Hank Hanegraaff in case you're wondering, the answer man. I don't have to be the one that solves all the issues and puts a stamp of God on it because I found the verse with my own abilities. I I answered this situation. I had the perfect answer for this issue. It's not about that. It's about relenting and focusing on what, he says to focus on. And that can be... Well, even the verse he talks about that God took him to, where they, they're like, well, let's build a tabernacle. And so he researches it out. And, you know, a lot of times, do you know what verse we're referring to when they go up to the mountaintop? And it's El- Mark Elijah, chapter 9. Elijah, Moses, Moses and, and Jesus. Jesus are up there. And so we, I've always read that as kind of like it's a quick happening 
and they want to build an altar to them. It's just the way I've interpreted it. Because of the word tabernacle in some versions. Right. And so I Mm -hmm. took tabernacle as altar and I've just always read it and they're like, no, what do you, no, no altar stuff. Like that's how I read it. And he looks it up and studies it out. And it was actually, they wanted to set up a tabernacle, which was a house where they could dwell like a tent so they could stay there longer. Because the conversation that we always thought was so quick, the actual verbiage there is that it was actually a prolonged conversation. So they were so like, it wasn't well, just like, like get comfortable. Hello, I'm Moses. <laughs> Hello, I'm Elijah. Surprise. Goodbye. <laughs> and then they're just long enough for, you know, for Peter to be like, whoa. No, they talk so long. The disciples were in a deep sleep. They wake up and they're like, okay, let's just, let's just com- make some tents because you guys aren't stopping. Uh, <laughs> anybody want to just, w- w- that way we can just keep going. And that's what the, 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 the actual account is. Not that it was like this big 25 second thing. And then I've always no. read it that way. Mm-hmm. Like they showed up and Peter's his normal, like, oh worship you and like wants to build a temple and woo you know they're like no peter you know what i mean like that's how i always read it and it was more like we just want to stay here we have a good idea we want to also be comfortable and you know the the verbiage there is like will you just listen (laughs) i mean like (laughs) just let's stop trying to be comfortable in your flesh and stay here longer and dwell in this moment like just there's something very important to get across here just tune in Mm -hmm. and put that carnal nature aside and then what does Jesus say on his, on his way down? Don't tell anybody about what happened. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Thanks. You Thanks had this that. fantastic supernatural experience. And he says, yeah, just don't tell anybody about that. Yeah. What? He's always testing I, that carnal nature. Even Jesus <laughs> told his disciples it was shutty season. Yeah. Like, nope. Silence. Even about good things. Sometimes yep. we blab like Joseph. Uh, you know, Joseph in the coat of many colors. He has this dream. This is what God showed me. You're all going to bow down to me. He starts spewing all these things about what God had been speaking to him. And it did not go well for him with his brothers. I think a lot of that could have been averted if he would have kept his mouth closed. And there's some, some, anyway. So good or bad, we have to let him lead what we say, what we share, what we think. And if he says... Don't share that. And you're like, oh, I really want to share this because it's going to be amazing. Keep your mouth closed. If you're thinking, I don't want to share that. I like being silent right now. And he's saying share it. Then let him lead. We got to put our mind on he's the leader. We don't have the option to our own opinions. We don't have the authority to decide anymore. What we do, what we say, what we meditate on with our thoughts. We have to say, you know what? Your way is the only way. And that's why even like... Technically, we have the authority not to, but we don't want the authority. If you want everything and I do and he does, if we want everything God has planned for us, then I don't want the authority to say, no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to think that. No, I don't want to say that. Yes, I want to say that. Yes, I want to think that, right? I don't want that. I either want all that he is and all that he says that I can have or I don't. And so that is the process of renewing our thinking, of taking every thought captive is, is this back in line with my Lord or is this my old way of thinking before the new seed came, before I lost my life to him willingly so that he Mm -hmm. could live? Is this thinking aligned with that? Just that simple. And all the time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, Philippians 4 yeah, 8. Yeah, I want to throw, I want to show you guys, we've thrown out a bunch of verses. I haven't shown you any of them. And so Philippians 4 8, uh, I would honestly say is a fantastic check or a cheat sheet to evaluate your thoughts. Hmm. It's fantastic. You can go back. This is one of my favorite sections of verses. Those of you that join me in root know that every class is my favorite and every <laughs> section of verses ends up being my favorite also. Philippians 4, 6 starts talking about the meditation to your heart. If you'd lack in peace, this is what you do. And then it works towards verse 8 and it says, "This. so what do you do then? If you're going to stay in peace, what do you do? And this is what it says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. 
Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You know, I was thinking and that's the other it. day, is I don't remember Jesus having any deep political thought like conversations that are documented in the word. You know? uh, other than give to Jesus or, or give Caesar. to Caesar what is Caesar's and God what is Paul, God's. Peter, no one had deep uh, talks about politics. And I say that because there's not a lot of good to think on right now in politics. There's not a lot of good to think on in news right now. And a quick way to draw you away from the thinking of Christ is to meditate on what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. So while reading that verse, if you can think of something honorable going on in the news, something uh, right and true and lovely going on in the news or in politics, well, that's what you want to think on. But there's enough people in the world thinking on that stuff. We need to be thinking on what he wants us to think on so that we can then say and meditate on what he wants us to say and meditate on and then do what he says to do because we're thinking and meditating on him and what he wants us to do, not on everything else that the world is already meditating on. Mm -hmm. That's that's easy. It's easy to let our carnal nature go and justify uh, the right to do it because we need to know what's going on. I don't know a scripture for that other than to know the, the ways of the enemy, but by meditating on the Lord, he'll reveal the tactics of the enemy. He'll say, oh, like when he showed me I was meditating on excuses. I didn't need to seek out the spiritual oppression of the enemy and his tool that he's using in my life in this area. No, I need to seek God so that his spirit, the spirit of truth, could expose the lie. The word says he will shine the light on the lie and then show you the way out. So nowhere in there does it say seek darkness to find light. You're not looking for the problem. You're not looking for what's affecting you. Even when it comes to sickness, you know, we were part of a church at one time where they would go, you know, I, I feel like this sickness is because you've been doing this. Like you can't, you can't find that in the word. When people would come to Jesus and say, what's causing this, you know, um, they, is it his parents' sin? Is it, you know, they're looking in the darkness for the answer. He's like, no, so God can receive the glory. So you see heaven come to earth and remove death and destruction, right? Mm -hmm. You will never find the answer to light by meditating on darkness. So that's just a freebie. Okay, so here's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a question. Here, <laughs> okay. And then you can throw it at them if you don't want to answer it. Okay. Uh, those people that are joining that's us. Nervous. So if you haven't joined, if you haven't, aren't part of the conversation, you're, you're out of this one. So too Wait, bad for you. Wait, real quick. But... Um, Fazios can't picture what, but uh, Kate and Holly were my answer right when you first get saved. Can I just throw this out there? She said she can't picture me having a grumpy morning. Oh, oh, I'll <laughs> videotape it for you. Okay, <laughs> Kate and Holly were my answers. Okay, when you first get saved, this is different. If you have solid believers in your life that are going to lead you to the word for answers, that's okay. Mm. Or lead you on how to hear the voice of God, Tara, that's totally okay. You know, you just don't dwell there. That helps right. you get going in the right direction. That's the reason, like, that would be like saying babies don't need someone to give them their bottle. Like, mm -hmm. go, you're going to be okay. Go drink your bottle. Right. You know, like when you we first do that. come into the kingdom, it's really important. We do that with parenting. Right. We, when the kids are young, we are their answer for everything. Go do this. This is your answer. This is your answer. Blah, blah, blah. But then it gets to the point where we have to teach them to seek out their own answers. And that's really hard as a parent. And it can be hard as a friend at the same time. Like, I'm so, you, I have the answer for you. This is, and I don't know if you are like one of those people that always have the answer for everything. Um, I'm not. I, I don't like, I don't want to take that position in your life. So I'll tell you to go find it. And, <laughs> you uh, will. And, we have and, a 12 year old that's in that transition. Mm -hmm. We have a 12 year old that's right. in the transition. And he still told. wants us to be the answer. As Christians do it the same thing. I want my pastor to give me the answers. And then if he doesn't tell me the answers, then I can't do it. I, I'm not equipped with the right, you know, whatever I need. And so then they don't take action. Where instead, we need to go and rely on him for our answers. So here's my question then, then Kate. So let's say, maybe it's not the news, but let's say there's something in their life that was really that's just happening right now that is really opposite of God's promises it's not there's something outside in the news that they're choosing to they can choose to turn that off or stop their newspaper member subscription or whatever okay. but it's something that's 
actively in their face, right there, staring at them every day. It could be could be sickness. It could be poverty. Uh, poverty it could be decisions of family members. And that you do we just ignore it then and go back to like, well, Pastor Josh and Kate said just focus on. Philippians 4 8, so I'm only going to focus on what's pure and what's <laughs> lovely, and I'm just going to ignore this that. This situation and, uh, is I not. won't, I won't uh, <laughs> touch that with a nine foot pole. Is that what we need to do, or is there something else that we should proactively be partnering with God in doing without letting our minds meditate on the negative? Hmm. Well, I think it goes back to asking the people. <laughs> I'm gonna ask the people in class what they think. They're shaking their head like, no. Oh, don't see, do it. I was don't about to it. like, I was about to bust it out there. But the fact <laughs> is, the answer I would give, I already gave. So does anyone in the class want to respond? So let's give a real scenario. Um, a loved one is incredibly sick. Maybe lives in your house. And you face it every day and they don't want to receive healing but there it is before you every day uh, you know um and or maybe they do say they want healing but they're not walking in it they say they want it but their words are different or whatever their you know yeah their actions up. right uh then what do you do how do how do you how do you think towards those situations how do you not meditate on it when it's right in front of your face all the time? Or in our case, it would be a, a unruly toddler. Cool. From 4 a.m. till <laughs> 10 p.m., you know, like, wants to steal your thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what do you do then? What do you do? Because real life is happening all around you. Uh, you find out you know, loss of a job, loss of finances, um, completely. Oh, well, now what do I do? I'm going to find my own solutions. I'm going to go Google new jobs. I'm going to grab the newspaper. I'm going to call my friends. I'm going to go, right? I'm going to start thinking on uh, what I need to do to stockpile, to write all the natural solutions. I'm going to hold on to the rope until I can't hold on anymore. Everyone's like, uh, ah, Tara. All right, Tara, let's hear it. Okay, number one. <laughs> Let me write this down. The opposite of what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> your carnal nature, your your natural inclination. Right. Whatever the first thing is that you're wanting to do, don't do that. <laughs> run! Don't run. <laughs> Sit in a ball and cry. <laughs> Fetal position, yeah. cross off. Yeah. I pray the spirit a lot more than I even were to begin with. Um, if it were someone sick in my house, I might pray in the spirit over them, whether they liked it or not, maybe quite loudly or aggressively. Um, and I, I would just, I would just, I would do those two things. Good. Mm -hmm. I love I like it. praying in the spirit. So mm -hmm. the Bible says that that will edify you where nothing else will. So when you feel just downtrodden and you can't seem to get a hold of your own thoughts and even going to the word feels like you're hitting a brick wall, praying in the spirit will help you break through. So that is really good that you brought that up because mm -hmm. uh, the word works. But there are times that your defiant attitude has built up enough wall that the word can't break through your own carnal thinking that you've been meditating on and you have set up this shield, the wrong shield, not a shield of faith, <laughs> a shield of unbelief that is not letting the truth of the word penetrate. And in that case, in any case, praying in the spirit is good. But in that case, when you've got a breakthrough and you going to the word isn't working, going to your friend and meditating on the word they give you isn't working, your friend praying for you isn't working, you know, you're like, okay, I, I have set something up here that I myself can't break through with the tools he's given me and I need the helper. That's why the Bible calls him the helper is because he breaks through that old wine skin or anything we've set up that would try to keep the promises of God, even when we're our own self false prophets mm -hmm. as, uh, from the words of our pastor or when we're our own worst enemy, when we're letting our carnal nature rule and reign rather than the king in us, 
That's so good, Tara, because the spirit, praying in the spirit will break through that. And you that means you've got to let yourself pray in the spirit as long as it takes to feel that wall crumble. And worship also works in the same way. Yep. When you absolutely do not feel like turning on worship and worshiping <laughs> is the time that you need to turn on worship in the middle of your living room, whether your kids mm -hmm. are cooperating or not, and just begin magnifying him because then where is your focus? Your you, focus is on heavenly things, on kingdom things. Your focus is on, I'm going to point over your head. <laughs> On what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. No who is all of those things? Right. He is. So if it me. gets to the place where you're like, I don't have any other great answers right now. I don't know what to do. Yeah. I don't even know how to think right about this situation because all I see is dishonorable, wrong, unpure, not lovely, Disobedient. not excellent. Um, you're thinking uh, that's all where all your thoughts are going. Then you... Put your thoughts on God and allow him to be the one that directs you how to think. Yep. Some of He'll them. begin to show you as you meditate not on the problem, but the God over that problem, the all-powerful one. He'll begin to reveal to, him, to you himself. And he is always the answer. And the other option I would say is um, Jesus himself said this kind of unbelief can only come out through prayer and fasting. So talking with him, focusing on the one that is pure, is lovely, is right, yep. and fasting to get rid of your own uh, carnal control in that area, in that situation. Yeah, where you've taken the reins where you might not even realize you did. Mm -hmm. We've eliminate, eliminated the availability you have to God controlling that situation because you've taken it away from him. You know, God is in control of everything is not true. When we can eliminate his control in our lives in a moment, he knows the beginning from the end. Mm -hmm which means he knows the solution to your problem, so he's probably a good source to go to, right? However, he's given us free will. And if we have free will, that means he's not in control of everything. So going to the one who knows the beginning from the end so that we can align with his plan is the solution. So worship, I tell you, some of my biggest breakthroughs, and I love studying the word, like studying the word, my strongs concordance out, that's my favorite thing in the world. But some of my biggest revelation comes when I'm going in and out of worship and praying in the spirit. Like just dropped revelation, like, poop, you know, now you have to be in your word up to that point, I believe, for him to be able to reveal some things that maybe you've read before but didn't understand that you had uh, read before and not received knowledge on, right? That while praying in the spirit and going in and out of worship is when I've received my biggest, like, wow, I never saw that before. And you, even while I'm speaking, you think I would do it more. You, you know, know what I'm going to do? Because I'm really been eating up a Brother Hagen's teaching on prayer and praise. Mm -hmm. And it directly talks about kind of where this conversation has been led. We would did not, and just for you for you all know, our we new, got our notes were different. page one of our <laughs> notes. And then we went totally off. A uh, total we different. That was yeah, we we got two. yeah we got okay. a verse okay. that was actually supposed to be in there. Yeah. All right, but so because we kind of went that direction, I'll send you. It's a part one and part two, I believe. So it's about an hour each one, and uh, it's fantastic teaching on how powerful praise is, and that's one of the other things I don't automatically think of prayer or praise as powerful. I think of it as a necessary part to get my heart right to receive the word of God in church service. And it's so much deeper than that. So um, I'll post that in the group discussion. For those of you that are like, group discussion? What are you talking about? <laughs> That's because you're not part of our Handle With Care series. So you got to join us. I'll put it up one last time. Handle With Care. Go to rootbible.com. Enroll today. It's free. So just enroll today. You can join the group discussion. You can see all the past files that we've put up there. Uh, there's classes. Uh, this one will be out there. There's classes for every age group, really. All on 
So this week it's all on thought. So tomorrow night, actually, I want to do a quick promo. Tomorrow night is the family class. And tomorrow evening at 6.30 Eastern. And so if you want your whole family to grow in this truth, while you all sit there together and can encourage one another on and uh, even practice some of these things in the middle of class, join tomorrow night. It's super fun. I love Miss Angela. She does an amazing job. She's so, so fun. So she teaches that class tomorrow night. And then, since we're kind of promoing things coming up, I want to mention The Real You is March and April's focus. Yeah. It's all about identity. So if you know someone that is struggling with identity questions, whether it's an adult or a kid, a youth, or you want to set your kids up to not struggle with, this is who I am in Christ. So when they hit those teenage years, those college years where certain styles of thinking are being so pushed on people that it's ridiculous and just destructive viewpoints, destructive lifestyles, you can circumvent that by helping them start right. So get them in this class. It's going to be so good. So it's going to be all of March and all of April. There's an all-out war on identity right now by the world, by the devil. So we're going to match that and give you, your family, your small groups, your churches the ability to set up a wall against him to not just stand wall. your ground, yeah. but to overwhelm all of the enemy's work in your spheres of influence. So if you want to be able to do that, you have to join us in the uh, course, The Real You, starting this next month. So join us there. That's on rootbible.com and I don't even have a lower third for it but we also have our 21 day course starting March 1st that's going to be awesome 21 days where kind of like what we talked today except it's an hour a day focus step by step to get your head right to get you thinking the way that God wants you to about yourself and about those around you so that you really can represent him well in every sphere of influence and be the person of God that you know on the inside you're supposed to be. You just don't know how to get there. We're going to give you the tracks to run on that will accelerate your ability to become who he's created you to be. I'm not going to promise in 21 days that you're going to be fulfilled all the way doing it, but you're going to know how to get there. Yeah. And well on your way. So and before we end, the scriptures we didn't touch on that I want to. And you can write them down or you can watch the high school, the elementary, the junior high class where we did go over these. Mark 7.15. We read it in the New Century Version to make it clear. And then all the way through uh, Mark 7.15 through 23. But it ends with basically Christ is saying, you know, what what is outside going in is not what's affecting you. It's what you will let out. So even though the outside is all around us, even though it's available to us, are we going to meditate on it and let it come back out? So those are good scriptures to, to talk on uh, with your spouse, with your family over dinner. We have our table talk cards. They're out there for free in the discussion area. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is the, the phrase that your family will recognize and you can start using uh, in your home is um, stinking thinking. Um, so oh, man, I just we're ten minutes. I know we're over. ten minutes. So we just get, get write that. that down. Use it with your kids. <laughs> use it with your family. Use it. You know what I mean? Like, and I'll give you a real example. Like this morning, really quick, we're walking. Okay. He takes our daughter uh, down by the water, and the person I'm with is like, he's not even by her. She's by the water. Like, you know what I mean? And I was like, stop. You, what are you thinking on right now? <laughs> like just that simple It's like is that stinking thinking have you now just gone to the worst case possible scenario and you have stopped being willing to live because you've already entertained the worst thing that could happen now that's just a small example but we can do that with so many areas in our life and being able to simply call it out with each other and go wait a minute that's stinking thinking that why do we call it stinking thinking because it's dead destructive loss Things that are dead are stinky. 
things that bring death are stinky. So we call it stinking thinking. So use that this week. Use that with yourself. Use it with your spouse. Use it with your families. Get the stinking thinking out. And it's anything that doesn't align with our new create new creation realities um, or thinking that will bring life. Okay? Right. All right. We are totally over. Yeah. All right. Totally. So I'm Pastor Josh. This is Pastor Kate. Thanks for joining us for Root. And we got to let Wait, you go. We'll pray what? over you. All right, so we're not letting you go. We are. Forget we'll that. Skip that. Let every mind be open, every heart <laughs> open, Lord, to receive the seed that you've put out there. Let it be good ground. Let it develop deep roots and let it bring them to reality that is beyond what we can do ourselves. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you stir them up, that they are praying in your, by your spirit, that you are edifying them as they do. And that we just worship you, Lord, knowing that all these things are true. And as they take deep root, our lives look different and we bring the kingdom to earth in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All, right. All right. Go live victoriously. Yes. We'll see you next week. Love you guys.